What's up guys, this is Tito back with another video and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the second build of the unofficial Line Engine 16 on the Redmi Note 7 Pro and how is everything else and how is the ROM working. So I'll talk about what are the bugs, what are the things which I feel should be improved and what are the things are amazing in this ROM right now. So as you guys know, I did a video about how to install the Line Engine 16 video and over here you will find the card. And I did a mistake over there, I gotta admit that and I apologize for that to you guys because I did not format the data while coming from MIUI to this custom ROM. So if, you're, if you have a Redmi Note 7 Pro and if you want to flash any kind of custom ROM, once you flash the like TWRP recovery after unlocking the bootloader and before flashing any kind of other custom ROM, I would definitely recommend you formatting the internal storage through TWRP once. So after you like you have to format the internal storage I think two times once to like decrypt the internal storage from MIUI and once again to wipe the MIUI stuff I think. So once you see those folders which I have shown in the installation video of the TWRP those folders are just showing up in the like internal storage of like TWRP once you reboot like for the first time you reboot to TWRP you, you will see those kind of folders so just format once. Now if you are not flashing a ROM, you can just reboot to MIUI but if you are flashing a ROM, make sure you go to wipe and format the data because otherwise you will have those kind of problems which I was having on the previous Lineage OS build like I could not even install any kind of like Antutu app or the Antutu 3D Bench and PUBG like or any kind of gaming apps I could not simply install over here on the custom ROMs. So I'll definitely recommend you formatting the internal storage and that fixes this problem of installing apps. So right now I do not have any kind of app installation problem on the Lineage OS. Yes, I, I tried to like dirty flash this ROM over the previous one but I still had those problems until I formatted the storage. So that is what you need to keep in mind before flashing any ROM on this Redmi Note 7 Pro. And let me tell you how is the ROM actually over here working and I have like made some bullet points over here I'll talk about them so I have talked about the formatting internal storage stuff and that is really recommended to flash any kind of custom ROM on this device as of right now and after that let me tell you what is added over here and what's the good thing over here that we have well this is the 9th April 2019 build of the Lineage OS 16 and I would say everything works like flawlessly as it was previously and we have like right now we have the face auto unlock feature which was not there for the previous build so face auto unlock right now does work super fine you don't need to worry and one more thing that i do not like over here is that there is the colors of the screen are a little bit dull in my opinion from MIUI and it is really noticeable if you have a like different device with you which has optimized colors like I have the Redmi Note 5 Pro if I compare the custom ROM's colors of the Redmi Note 5 Pro this color over here feels a little bit dull to my eyes so that is how it is so I hope this gets optimized in the future but right now that's not the case yes the colors of the screen becomes a little bit dull like from MIUI and the double tap to wake well the double tap to wake is not really working i would say like i did not reboot of course but like turning on the double tap to wake and locking the screen and trying the double tap to wake does not work so that's how it is but me like the reboot may fix this issue i don't know and now let me show you guys some things which are present in this rom still so we still have the trebuchet launcher by default over here and if you go to the left you will get the google now cards and tap to hold and stuff works flawlessly and you can just pull down from here like you can just pull down swipe down anywhere on the home screen to get the quick settings panel as you can see and if you just go to the settings of this launcher here is how the settings panel looks like still no double tap to sleep of course over here but yeah we will see in the future and let me just go to the settings and still i would say there is no vaulty icon so i miss that not gonna lie and if you go into the display settings we do have this kind of live display feature but yes as i said the colors are a little bit dull but you can calibrate the colors from here but i could not really find a sweet spot to like calibrate these colors so i'm just using it by default and you can change the display mode to like day night the night mode makes the display a little bit yellowish over here and let me just go back and if you go into style you can choose the themes to like light dark etc 
and of course the accent color changing options are still there and you can even change it to this auto magic and over here we have the rotation settings and 180 degree and stuff is still there let me unlock the screen and show you guys the how is the fingerprint scanner speed so as you can see the fingerprint scanner speed is not bad it's pretty fast as you can see it's pretty fast i would say and if you go over here we do have the tap to sleep or the double tap to sleep and you can disable the wake up on plug from here let me just go back and if i go into sounds of course we do not have the mi audio direct but you can disable this touch sounds and dial pad tones screen locking sounds etc stuff and if you go into the security over here if you go into the lock screen and from here you can see we have the face auto unlock and let me show you the about phone quickly if i go into the android version here as you can see of course it's still running on android pi 9 and the lineage os version over here is 16.0 9th april 2019 build and here is the security patch april 5th 2019 so the latest security patch we get over here and the vendor security patch is of the august 5th 2018 and the stock kernel version is per plus kernel over here and if you want to enable the like the advanced reboot and stuff you have to go to this build number and tap on this seven times and if you go into the system and go to like advanced and inside developer option you can get this like advanced reboot oops you, as you can see the advanced restart is there you can get it and if you now hold it like tap and hold the power button it will show you the reboot option and if you tap on the restart it will show you the advanced reboot options like to reboot to system recovery or like fast boot let me just go back and of course we do have the customization still here as you can see we have the status bar customizations the brightness control with the status bar is still there as you can see i'm controlling the brightness with the status bar so this just works flawlessly you don't need to worry and we have the system icons but yes the vaulty icon i do miss that it is not there and you can enable the headset bluetooth etc icons from here and we have the quick pull down and stuff to like right left you can choose it however you want and from buttons you can customize the button layout i have changed this button layout to this like inverted so from this button layout you can you can change this to like inverted so that the back button becomes over here and the rotation stuff is still present as you can see it shows the icon over here let me just go back so you can customize pretty much everything and long press for torch is there so if i just lock the screen and press and hold the power button as you can see it, it turns on the torch when the screen is locked let me just do that again as you can see it works so yeah these is like these are pretty cool features in my opinion which are present over here now let's talk about one more thing which is really annoying is the default screen recorder app well can't simply record screen and if you hit the record button on the screen recorder app and it's gonna do weird things like it may feel like a three years old samsung budget phone it lags that much if you are like trying to screen record and once you did like start the screen record and stuff and once you are finished with the screen record when you try to play the video you will see just a green screen on that video so the screen record is kind of not working at all in this rom but screenshots does work super fine you don't need to worry and like if you are even using any kind of third party screen recorder app like the az screen recorder that simply does not work too it does the same thing so it just stutters lags so that is how it is now talking about the stock camera we still have that kind of like the cyanogen mod camera kind of but it is a little bit modified i think it might be a different camera too i'm like saying it wrong maybe so that's how it is but we do have the stock camera and with the stock camera both front back like every camera works super fine you don't need to worry and yes you can install still google camera over here because we do have camera to api still and you can install any kind of pixel 3 camera yes i did show the latest version which i could find of the pixel 3 camera but there are versions which i'll list in the comment section below which works even with the portrait mode and stuff the latest version of google camera does not work with the portrait mode on the redmi note 7 pro right now now let's talk about the sound output via the headphone jack over here well the sound output via the headphone jack is super fine the quality is great and it's pretty flat if you like flat music profile you are definitely gonna love it and i would say even with the bluetooth headset which i'm using it is pretty fine well we do not have any kind of me audio direct but we do have audio effects here which does help to boost or like equalize the sound and it does work it's not bad at all 
and regarding vault e calls yes vault e calls work super fine with like both the sims and like if you have two geo sims you can use dual vault e and in the call ui we do have the call recording option and stuff so if you need those yes those things are there and even calling via a bluetooth headset does work super fine too now let's talk about the banking apps again well google pay simply does not work over here by default at least so i think you might have to disable the phone and sms app permissions from the google play services to get the google pay working or any other banking apps to be working over here and let me show you the drm info so as you can see here the drm info is level 3 well i know it was level 1 in miui but we might get a fix in the future but as of now since this is an unofficial rom so i would say since this rom is the second build of this unofficial lineage OS for the device so you may see level 1 drm info in the future not right now now let me show you the gaming performance and as i installed pubg and all other stuff like the android 3d bench here is the android score over here and as you can see the android score is not as much as me why it's around the similar but it's quite 5000 around less so of course we have the android pie volume panels over here as you can see and you can put the phone into vibrate or silent from here let me just quickly close it and show you guys the graphic settings so as you can see the by default the graphic settings is set to hd and high and if you go into balanced you can play on ultra or even smooth you can play on ultra so I'm, I'm gonna play on balance on ultra and show you guys that how is the performance over here and by the way you can see that this like corners are like covering up the screen pretty much and i do have a screen protector applied maybe that is why it's like showing up a little bit more but yeah and it still shows the black bar over here on the like north side so that's how it is now let me quickly start a match i'll start an arcade match so as you can see the gaming performance seems pretty fine i am pretty much confirmed that here i am getting around 60 fps pretty sure because the gameplay is like super fine over here So after playing PUBG, yes, the phone does get quite a lot hot, but it's not too hot to the touch that I can confirm and I can simply touch the back glass over here, but it's definitely not too hot to the touch. It's around 40 degrees Celsius as it shows in CPU Z, but yeah, it, it does not get at all like too much heated up or something after even playing PUBG. And now let me show you one more thing over here. If you go into the settings, and if you go into the system inside advanced you will find the oops not this one the updater over here as you can see and you can check for updates over here i think the last time it did not support the updates like with this updater but right now i think it will support the next updates with this like stock updater over here and of course it shows the line OS 16 version over here and let me just go back from here and if I go into the quick settings panel, we do have the heads up disabling option. You can toggle the live display or something like that from here. So the Android score seems like a little bit less than MIUI. But yeah, the daily driving performance on this device is a breeze. I did not even face one random reboot ever in this ROM and everything works flawlessly. The app open up speeds, the RAM management, both are working fine. Here is the demo. Let's open Chrome file explorer facebook oops twitter play store youtube so as you can see the app opens up like instantaneously you don't have any kind of like delay while opening apps now let's open all the apps from memory again and it's it's pretty fast it there is no lags and i can definitely tell it's faster than the redmi note 5 pro pretty much so no issues whatsoever regarding these kind of stuff and if you want the best performance from here like with stock android i definitely recommend you flashing this from pretty sure 
So as you can see for daily driving performance I would say this ROM is pretty great. Everything like with the RAM management works flawlessly over here. The ROM is super fast. You don't need to worry at all regarding performance over here. And the battery life over here is again just amazing. You don't need to worry at all. I'm getting around 8 hours of screen on time with my kind of usage and that is just amazing I would say. So that is pretty much it guys for this video. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions or queries regarding this ROM on the Redmi Note 7 Pro and let me know that what you guys feel about this custom ROM running on the Redmi Note 7 Pro and if you are willing to flash this ROM ever. So that is pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching this video again. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel down there if you have not yet. This is Tito from KD and Tech signing off for today. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.